Switching to EFI can be intimidating, but if you thought finding that original Hemi engine for your super stock Dart was hard, consider the endless array of connectors, terminals, and crimping tools out there, and your head will be spinning faster than a set of slicks on an oiled down track. We know your struggle, and we want to help. After all, we're car people too. With so many manufacturers using such a wide variety of connectors and sensors, it's hard to keep up with them all, let alone trying to remember what depinning and crimping tools you need for which connector. This video will help you identify the connectors found on our Gen 3 Hemi harnesses. I'll also show you what tools you'll need to depin them and how to properly crimp them. One thing to note with our Gen 3 Hemi harnesses is that there's an early and a late design. The early harness has connectors for use with the early crank and cam sensor design. And our late harness matches the later crank and cam sensor design. Both harnesses have provisions for TPS as well as idle air control and can be used with our cable operated throttle bodies. Let's start with the Holly EFI J connector. You'll find these connectors used on the Holly HP, Avenger, and Terminator ECU, as well as the Dominator and Terminator X ECUs. The technical name for this terminal is the Tyco Super Seal 1.0. I really like this design, mainly because releasing the terminals from the connector body is super simple. You'll notice the two small white tabs on one side and a larger white tab on the opposite side of the connector. To release the terminals, simply push in on the larger tab with a small screwdriver. You should hear a click, and the two smaller tabs should now be protruding from the connector body. The locking tab holding the pins in is now disengaged, and you're able to remove, replace, or swap any of the pins within the connector by simply pulling them out. A firm tug may be required to remove them. Once you have all the pins back in where you'd like them, simply press down on both the protruding tabs until they're flush again with the connector body and locked in place. To properly crimp a Tyco Super Seal 1.0, you'll need a terminal designed for the wire gauge that you're using, as well as a special crimping tool. These crimpers are great since you can swap out the jaws for other jaws that allow you to crimp Deutsch, Amp Pin, Amp Lug, Weathertight, and more. If you're using these crimpers on our ECU pins, you'll need to remove the support assembly that's attached to the side of the crimpers. Begin by stripping approximately 3 16 of an inch of insulation from your wire. Slide the strip portion of your wire into the terminal, then place the terminal into your crimping tool. Squeeze the tool until it's completely crimped and releases. Another popular connector found on the Hemi engines is the Delphi Metropac 150. Gen 3 Hemis use the Metropac 150 style connectors for the wideband O2 sensor, power tap, injector harness to main harness, the input output connector, as well as the coil injector harness to main harness connections. To crimp the Metropac 150s, I like to use this tool. This crimper can also be used for the weather pack as well as the Metropac 150 and 280 terminals. Once again, the more you spend on the tool, typically the better crimp you're going to get out of them. Start by installing the appropriate size seal onto your wire. The seals are color coded to work with different wire gauges and make sure that the ribs are faced away from the terminal. Strip approximately 3 16 of insulation from your wire. You don't have to twist the wire, just leave it as strands. Insert the terminal into your crimper, lining up the terminal with the appropriate jaws, then squeeze. With the lower cost crimpers, you'll have to do the process twice, once for the wire and once for the seal. With the higher dollar units though, typically they do it all in one shot. Now we can install the terminals into our connector. The terminal should only be able to go into the connector one way. Make sure that the tab on the terminal is facing up and pointed towards the connector's locking tab. Then insert the terminal into the connector until you hear it quick. Be sure that the seal is fully seated in the connector hole to prevent any contaminants from entering. Then install the TPA to the back of your connector. To release the Metropac 150 terminals from the connector body, you'll need a depinning tool such as this, or you can use a safety pin or even a paper clip that's about 30 thousandths in diameter. You can use your fingers or a small screwdriver to remove the TPA. The TPA provides strain relief and prevents the terminals from being pulled out of the connector body. Now locate the small square cutout in the connector near the top of the terminal. You can find it on the same side as the connector retaining clip. Insert your depinning tool or paper clip into the small square cutout and press firmly. The tool will travel a few millimeters then come to a stop. Once the tool is seated, firmly pull on the wire and terminal to remove it. If you plan to reuse your terminal, you'll need to pry up slightly on the locking tab found on the terminal. 
This ensures that the terminal will lock back into place once it's reinstalled into the connector body. Mopar also uses Delphi's GT150 connector design on their Gen 3 Hemis. You can find this style of connector used on the TPS, IAC, and fuel pressure sensors. The GT150 uses slightly smaller seals and terminals and comes in two designs, a push to seat as well as a pull to seat design. The GT150 push to seat design is crimped just like the Metropac 150, but uses a different crimping tool. I found this one online. The GT150 connectors also use a TPA for strain relief. However, it has what's referred to as a PLR, or primary locking reinforcement. This lock goes on the front of the connector to help secure the terminals. To depin the GT150 push to lock design, you first need to remove the TPA from the back of the connector. You can use your fingers or even a small screwdriver to do this. Then you'll need to remove the POR from the front of the connector. You can do this with a small knife, but I find it works best to use the fingernails of my thumb and middle finger. Place the fingernails on either side just below the base of the POR and pull to remove it. Now we can see the locking mechanism. Use a small knife or pick to raise the plastic locking tab up and release the terminal. Be careful that you don't lift it too far and break the tab though. With the locking tab raised, you can pull on the wire to remove the terminal. When you're installing a new terminal, pay special attention to the orientation of the terminal. If you look closely, you'll see a small cutout in the terminal where the tab that we released earlier catches. Make sure that the tab on the connector and the cutout on the terminal are lined up. Then press the terminal and wire into the appropriate slot until it locks. Reinstall the POR to the front of the connector and the TPA to the rear of the connector and you're done. Most of our newer wiring harnesses utilize the push to seat GT150 design, but some older harnesses as well as our smart coils use the pull to seat design. The pull to seat GT150 assembles just a little bit differently. They don't use a seal crimped to the terminal and instead have a seal built into the back of the connector. You first have to run the wire through the seal and through the connector. Then go ahead and crimp the terminal to the wire. Line up the tab on the terminal with a slot found in the connector body. Then simply pull on the wire to lock it into the connector. Another connector you'll find on the Gen 3 Hemis is the Molex design. To crimp the Molex design terminals, you'll need a good crimping tool, like this one from MSD. Begin by installing the seal onto your wire. Make sure that the ribs are faced away from the terminal. Next, remove 3 16 of an inch of insulation from your wire. Open the tool and insert the terminal into the correct jaw. Lightly squeeze the handles of the crimper to keep your terminal in place. Then insert the stripped end of your wire into the terminal and squeeze. Release the crimper and inspect your crimp for quality. Repeat the process using the correct die to crimp the seal. To assemble a Molex connector, first make sure that the locking tab found on the front of your connector is disengaged. You can use a depinning tool or a small screwdriver to pry up on the locking tab until it's disengaged. Slide the terminal in until the spring tab engages. Then press down on the locking tab on the front of the connector to prevent it from coming loose. To depin a terminal from a Molex style connector, you'll either need a good pick or a depinning tool. Use the pick to pry up on the lock and remove it completely. Then insert the pick between the terminal and the connector body. Once the pick makes contact with the plastic locking tab inside the connector, pry the tab away from the terminal while pulling gently on the wire to remove the terminal from the connector body. The knock sensors found on the Gen 3 Hemi harnesses use a DMS design and can be depinned as follows. Remove the terminal lock from the rear of the connector. Using a pick or similar tool, pry the plastic tab away from the terminal at the front of the connector and pull on the wire to remove the terminal. To assemble the DMS design, run the wire first through the seal, make sure that it's turned the correct way, then strip approximately 3 16 of an inch of the insulation. Crimp the wire to the terminal using the correct crimpers and repeat to crimp the seal to the terminal. Insert the terminal into the connector body until it's locked in place, then install the terminal lock to the back of the connector. You'll find the Yazaki connectors used for the cam sensor in early Hemis. Later cam designs used up to three different variations of connectors. To remove a terminal from a Yazaki connector, you'll first need to release the POR from the front of the connector with a small screwdriver, or you can use your fingers. Insert the tool into the square cutout just above the terminal on the front of the connector. Press the tool in until it stops, then pry upwards while at the same time pulling on the wire to remove your terminal. 
Crimping a Yazaki terminal requires a special crimper or die set, but you can get by using a pair of these MSD crimpers. Install seal onto the wire, positioning the ribs away from your terminal. Strip the insulation from the wire and insert the terminal into the crimpers. Squeeze the tool to complete the wire crimp, then reposition and repeat to crimp the seal. Insert the terminal into the connector body until it locks, then press down on the POR to lock it all in place. Hemi's uses a Seabro connector for most MAP sensor connections. Seabro connectors have a TPA as well as a PLR, and to depin the connector, you'll need to remove both of these before the terminal can come out. Remove the TPA from the back of the connector using a small screwdriver or your fingers. Remove the seal next. Now using a small pick or screwdriver, push the PLR away from the connector and remove it completely. Now working from the back side of the connector, Insert a Metropack tool or something similar between the terminal and the connector body. This releases the plastic tab and allows you to pull the terminal out. To crimp Seabro terminals, you'll need a pair of Metropack crimpers or an equivalent. Run the wires through the TPA, then through the seal. Now strip the wire and place the terminal in the crimper. Lay the wire into position and crimp your terminal. Rotate the terminal in the correct orientation and insert it into the connector until it locks into place. Slide the seal into position and install the TPA. You can then install the POR to the front of the connector and lock in place. Early Gen 3 Hemi models use the apex connector at the crank sensor. Depinning this connector involves removing the POR from the front of the connector and the TPA from the rear. With the seal and POR removed, you can use a small pick to pry the plastic locking tab up and away from the terminal. Pull on the wire while prying the tab away to remove your terminal. To crimp the Apex terminal, first run the wire through the PLR and the seal. Strip the insulation from the wire, then crimp the terminal using the appropriate crimping tool. I'm using the Metropack tool. Once crimped, insert the terminal into the connector body until it clicks and locks into place. Seat the seal into the connector, then install the TPA and the PLR to complete the assembly. The FCI style connector was used on later model Hemis for the crank sensor. To depin the FCI design, first disengage the PLR from the front of the connector with a pick or small screwdriver. It will have to be completely removed. Now use a small pick to lift up on the plastic tab found opposite of the main connector lock. While raising the tab, pull on the terminal wire at the same time and remove it. Crimping an FCI can be done using the same crimp tool as the Metropack terminals. Run your wire through one of the seals. Make sure that the smaller diameter is towards the terminal. Then strip and crimp the terminal using the crimpers. Reposition and crimp the seal. Slide the terminal into the connector until it locks in place, then install the POR to the front of the connector to complete your job. Note that the rib on the POR will only allow it to be installed one way. This should pretty much cover all the connector designs that you'll find on our Gen 3 Hemi harnesses. You may come across a few other connectors on our harness, such as the Metropack 640, which is used for the main power and ground, as well as various connectors used for each injector design. If you've lost or broken any connectors, we offer a complete replacement connector kit for your Gen 3 Hemi. Well, I hope this video helps take some of the guesswork out of your next wiring job. If you own an LS or a Coyote engine, and you'd like to know more about the connectors associated with those harnesses, check out our other great wiring how-to videos at holly.com.